Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this episode of Coffee with Jim and James. As usual, look at me. I am ecstatic on top of the world. All right, let's, it's a serious topic. Let me bring you down to re reality. And if you guys don't mind, I'm going to go off script a little bit because, you know, that, that persona that I just did, people have known me in the industry for years and they always say I'm positive, happy go lucky. And I always try to put on that persona when at times it seems like I was suffering in silence. And that's a term that James uses a lot. John and I have become good friends and we've had some open discussions. And I think this last year and a half has uh, really enlightened me to the idea of not just looking at others, but also internally and all around us, you know, you know, those that may be suffering in silence are putting up these facades that, oh, look at everything looks great with Jimmy. He's always on top of the world when in reality I'm not. We were, we all attended uh, AGA and SGA recently. We had some really good conversations and that's what really brought us back together again to have this really heartfelt and really needed conversation. Because I can't tell you, I know discussions with John and James, you know, we saw so many people there when you ask them how they're doing, they're like, great, we're on top of the world. Then you're like, how are you really doing? Well, you know, so with that, let me hand it over to James. Would you please bring in our friend for us, James? And uh, we will uh, dive into this really important yeah. subject. You bet, Jimmy. Thank you. Um, John, it's always awesome when we have somebody back because, uh, you know, that means it went well. Uh, everybody says, Phew. you know, the first one's a courtesy invite. The second one means, uh, you know, we got something good going on. But those that don't know, John uh, joined us a while back. Uh, and, John, I'll let you do a, a quick intro of yourself. But John joins us from uh, Hydromax USA. Uh, we, as Jimmy said, we just saw them at, at AG and SGA as well and got the fellowship and I actually joined them at their booth um, mm -hmm. yeah. to, uh, yeah. you know, talk about some of their solutions. So, John, give us a little flyover uh, metaphorically. Yeah, metaphor, yeah. <laughs> Thanks a lot. It's great to be back. So glad to be here. Um, you know, it, it's always great, like you said, to get asked back, especially on, on a topic like we're going to talk about today. Um, it's near and dear to my heart. You know, I've in, in just a little bit, for those who don't know me, uh, part of my background besides, you know, uh, being privileged enough to, to lead Hydromax USA is that you know, I'm, I'm a retiree of the U.S. Navy, 21 years, uh, very, you know, different uh, scenario than business in a lot of ways. But this topic we're going to talk about, you know, it used to be that it was a very hidden subject and it was very hidden when I was in the military. Uh, it was hidden even in business when I joined business, you know, the, you know, you didn't, talk about these you did you wouldn't get on a podcast and talk about jim what you were saying hey you know what every day isn't great and yeah. and you know if everybody it was really seen that you needed to be that person who was always optimistic always out front inside people are fighting hidden battles um and i think a lot of that you know where, where we started talking about this uh and where i get very passionate about it and i and i admit like you jim very bad days sometimes you know there there are days that you're not okay Right. Uh, and it can seem like you're very much alone. And I think those are a couple of symptoms of when people yeah. have that. And for us as, as either leaders in business or as friends, family members, others, um, it's hard sometimes because we don't know about it. And I think that's what this discussion is going to be so good about is how do we, you know, what, how do we kind of adjust on that? Because it's very different then maybe two years ago, even prior to the pandemic, some world events that have triggered some anxiety for some people uh, and some, some questions. And all of these things are wrapped up today in, in, what, in, peop in people's psyche as they're going about their day-to-day -day home life and business lives. Yeah. And John, um, when, when we discussed this, we kind of kicked some emails back and forth after you were on the first time. And Right about the same time, we were kicking off this mental health series. Uh, get, I believe we coined Get Out of Your Head. It's still a work in progress. Um, and you reached out and said, hey, we actually have something going on right now that is so relevant and something. And that's this is where I'm going to tee it up for you is, um, you know, we're, we're pulling out of Afghanistan. We have a lot of folks that now are, you know, in leadership roles are, you know, everyday American civilian life. 
folks that are dealing with something that is very confusing. It's very much, you know, a prideful thing for a lot of people. And, and like you said, um, I just read something from Brene Brown where she was discussing how sometimes, you know, for us men and, and, and especially those in leadership that sometimes it feels like it'd be better to die on the white horse than to admit, you know, vulnerability or failure to a spouse, a, a coworker, you know, any of that. And that's kind of what we're going to dive in today, John, is how, how can we be better to those in those situations? How, what does it look like? How can we help? So let's start with the why behind it all, John. Yeah. I mean, it, it, and, and I want to touch on one thing you just said there, James, you know, and this is an issue that it isn't just, you know, men or anything. It goes yeah. cross gender. It goes across anyone. Right. Right. Um, it, I, I see it. The scary part for me, and we won't probably touch as much on this, but I have uh, teenage uh, children. I have yep. some that are grown mm-hmm. and how that manifests for them today. I mean, yeah. that, that's because that's a totally new world uh, in this virtual. If, if you're still in virtual, or if you're back at school, how does that social go? But, uh, you know, the why just varies for a lot of different people. If, if you have a veteran network within your company, you've probably heard some people raise their hand. Uh, I'm very, very pleased and very proud that our company has that. Uh, and we have, we have had some discussions, you know, and, and sent out some word to people on what is going to, it's okay. And also used it to also offer up um, our company resources that we, that we have for them if they're feeling that way and if they're feeling alone and don't feel like they can reach out. But, you know, the events in the world today, the, the isolation that people have gone through. Uh, I mean, it's, it's bad enough. I will, I will speak from personal experience. It's bad enough to have some sort of a PTSD or, or anxiety, but then to be isolated because yeah. one of the things that you use it is you use this, you know, you use uh, people and outlets to help and to, to use it as a coping mechanism. So isolation, the pandemic, the, the anxiety over the pandemic now is, as whichever side of the fence you're on, vaccinated, non-vaccinated, uh, we're seeing different rules and things laid out. All these things are affecting people at home and in, and in the workplace. And so the why is because they don't teach this in business school. They don't teach this as you're going through. This is a leadership lesson from the field, we call it, uh, that you have to understand people. You have to be aware of the signs that people are looking you know, people are displaying. And then you have to understand that it, and it's very counterintuitive for us as leaders or, or, even, or even as family members sometimes is we want to fix it. We, we want to get in and help people right away. And, and I am extremely guilty of this. Okay. Yeah. And, I, and I say it, it has self-awareness right there. I'm extremely yeah. guilty of this that I, I, I ask sometimes people that I've known and I'll say, Hey, what's wrong? You doing okay? And they're like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yep. First, the first talking point on this is the, the person who's going through it has to be ready to talk. Right. You're not going to be able to dive in and extract it or possibly they're just possibly having just a bad day and they're just getting, getting themselves through it. And we tend to want to go, no, no, you know, tell me what's going on. I can help you when really, I guess the, the first real lesson in this today is, you know, be there, be present. Just mm-hmm. when they're ready, they're going to talk to you if they're going through it. I think that goes for a lot of different stresses today. And, and again, they don't teach us in leadership school. They tell you, go fix a problem. And a lot of times all that person's looking for is an ear. Yeah. And, and I, John, I, I got to hit on something, too, because it's personal for me. I, the three of us know this and most of the audience does because I'm not shy about it. But I'm an alcoholic, although I've been sober for 10 years, three months and 23 days. And I'm going to say 14 hours. And I'm very proud every day that I hold on to that. But I just know I'm a volunteer at a recovery church. And the amount of people during this isolation time that um, look for coping mechanisms. And sometimes they're, they're good coping mechanisms. And sometimes they're not good coping mechanisms. And I think that that whole idea of being a presence in people's lives for when they want to talk 
that they know that you're open and and James, you use a term all the time, but it's uh, like a non-judgmental that you know if you want to have a talk like John being a CEO, a lot of people may be intimidated by that. But if John puts off that persona and says, you can be honest with me, I want you to be, and I will, you know, give you my honest feedback too. And I think that goes into my next point here is who, who all should be involved with this? I mean, you know, you mentioned a few people, but I think we've dive a little bit deeper into that because I think a lot of us may not realize that we could be a great help and influencer to the folks out there. Well, and, and you know, you're, you're spot on with that. And I think the other part of this is not everyone's going to come to you or me or James, uh, but they're going to come to maybe that friend they've got in the field or that person they've worked with for 10 years. And those people are the ones that I find come forward most times say, Hey, so, so-and-so has approached me. I think they're having a really tough time. Mm-hmm. What do I do? How do I, how do I handle this? And so this is where I think the other form of leadership is uh, being able to mentor and to help those people that, that, that people are talking to, to be able to, to watch for the right signs, be able to talk to them and give them, you know, give them support when they, when they're ready for support and to really show empathy. Yeah. I think set, up, empathy. set up and listen sometimes is so exactly, uh, you exactly. know, that act of listening trait that you know that you can hone in like the moment i realized how powerful it was just to listen and sh- really just shut up it, it felt yeah. like i changed as a leader like because i'm same way john I'm, my wife's probably watching this episode going amen because i'm the king of i have a headache have you taken some ibuprofen you know like that's my immediate response so much that it's a joke you know now but i'm the same way i'm i i want to prescribe something to to make it better when really listening sometimes is the best medicine and let me just jump in because i think it was john maybe at orlando aga and correct me if i'm wrong but were were you and i having a discussion about empathy versus sympathy yeah okay yep yep yep. yeah Yeah. and and that's and that was exactly where i was going with what james what you just said is you know not only is it i think better to listen. And I've learned those lessons too through, throughout my career and my life and, and those experiences. Um, but you have to also realize this is the second point, I think, from someone who does deal with anxiety or, or with you know dep- depression or whatever it is. And, and these are not dark terms. These are real things that people deal with today. I think at one time in our society, they were just things you didn't talk about or, or somebody just can't handle it. That's not the case. That's yeah. not the case. Uh, and, and I think we've come around as a society to understand that, or at least I see more of it. And I think that's important, but back to this empathy. And I said, leading with empathy, first, you've got to know your people Yep. because to be, to see signs, you've got to know your people and your leaders in your organization or your, they have to know their people, know their families and that so they can pick up on signs. But the other thing about listening is, most people are not looking for sympathy. Right. They're, they're looking for empathy and, and they're looking for, for a leader who listens, who cares, who, you know, will be that, that lifeline sometimes. Um, and I think that is, that keeps the door of hope open. I like that. And, and that's what you need when, when something goes terribly wrong, the doors close. Yeah. If, 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 if there's not a lifeline present, if there's no way to, um, if it just seems like, well, all, you know, it's just all, everything's gone and I can't even get, you know, talk to anyone. That's a bad situation. And that, that's when it gets to extreme, but we got to keep the doors open for these, for people who are going through this. And I would say, keep the doors open even from people that you don't think are going through it. Cause I'll just about bet somebody is. And that's, hey, a, that's a big point there. That's a John, really- can I ask you, and this is a very candid question mm-hmm. um, because and, and I don't want this to come off as a lack of support because that's definitely not the case, but uh, being a non-veteran leader myself, okay, um, which, you know, odds are there are a lot of us out there. How, how can we relate, empathize, you know, like, is there something that we can go to? It sounds, that sounds dirty. Like, is there a tip for me? But I, it, sometimes I feel like it's, talking about a subject that that i don't know 
down to my core, like someone that, that lived through it deals with it. You know, that, yeah, I mean, like it or not, they are labeled and as a veteran and how do I, how do I have those conversations and how can I relate? You know, like, does that make sense? No, that's a, that's a great question. That is, it's a great question because as our military has kind of shrunk in the last few years and other things, there are going to be fewer and fewer veterans out in, in, in the public area sure. um, for like society, whatever you want to call it. Um, but, you know, I, I think, I think James, here, here's an important point. You don't have to relate. You don't have to have had those experiences. Again, that listening is what that person's there. They'll, they'll share with you their, their, their experiences, their comfort level of talking about that. And there's varying stages of that. Um, my dad was a world war II vet. Uh, I know what he, I know more about after he died, what he did than while he was alive. He just, you never talked about it. People normally veterans really won't talk about what causes a lot of the, the items that are happening, but they're looking for that voice. They're looking for somebody who at least gets that they're going through something. Now, the other thing that I, I tell our leadership team and I, I tell our, you know, our, our channel, we have a team's channel for veterans. We have multiple yeah. ways to reach out and connect for, for our company is I also keep on there some of the veteran hotlines. So if they're looking for somebody that they specifically, that specifically can relate to, to that experience or can talk them through something that, they're still struggling with from that experience, they can go right there. So sometimes just being that conduit to point them in the right direction yeah. can help them even great. You don't, have to, you don't have to be the answer, but yeah. if you can help them understand their options and people there that they can confidentially talk to. And then there's so many great organizations that do this across the country today. There really no are. I mean, cost. I, you know, yeah. John, and it's, it's employee awareness, right? To, to another segment. It's something that it's so cheap you know in the scheme of things that um it takes no time to put a message out it takes yeah. no time to um pin that so that everybody sees it right when they come in you know like whatever that is whatever the cadence of messages you can probably add one more you know <laughs> to it and i i like that viewpoint well um, i encourage always being proactive uh because it, even though you look for signs, we've talked a lot about signs and that signs sometimes are a trailing indicator. By the time it's gotten to signs, a lot of times it's gotten down, down a road. And I think that a lot of them making sure that you're keeping the options out there, keeping the people that can talk to them out in front. That helps before there, you know, it gets too, too, too deep. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I think just, again, I think that this is great. You guys having this because, you know, having this kind of discussion, is such a change from let's say five years ago, maybe even two years ago. Yes. In, you know, I mean, when we start talking about leadership, we start talking about people uh, and, and it's not a stigma anymore. And that's what I, that's what I tell everybody is, Hey, listen, I'm, I'm very open with my group about, Hey, some of the challenges I've had in things. And um, you know, I think that I'm not saying that to um, you know, gain a confidence. I'm, I'm just basically being very honest and open yeah. uh, because I want people to feel that they've got that venue throughout. And it may not be me they want to talk to, but it may be somebody else. It may be somebody at one of these associations we talk to who can yeah. help them uh, get through it because, uh, you know, that's people are, I, I, you know, pre-pandemic, I would have said a CEO or a leader is probably dealing 50% of the time with people. You know, then there's a strategy and then there's a performance segment sure. of what you do. I've got to say today, it's probably 75%. You know, everything we do has to be about people. You know, it has to be about helping people to succeed and to be able to have a, a you know, a, an environment where they can succeed. And that that's what's most important. Yeah, I I agree. Um, and and this year has, has taught us that sometimes we, you know, the lesson will be taught until it is learned. Uh, yeah. here we yeah. are. Right. Uh, and, yeah. and it's a great time. I will say, even in these last couple of events that we've been together, you know, at that seeing topics and awards and things built around mental health is a great sign that we're talking about it a lot more. And yeah. again, it's a general awareness thing. Yeah. Um, so, so how do we, 
How do we get going? You said be present. I love that. Um, you know, I think as leaders, that's a superpower in itself. Uh, once you figure that part out, it's it's huge. I think the companies out there that are really doing great things and building places that people want to work have realized that. What else, John? Well, you know, it, it's it's about being genuine. Uh, you know, being you know having the culture in your organization where people can freely talk about these items and. You know, and also I think it's it's so important again, and I, and actually you guys had the tagline, I remember on one of your LinkedIn posts that actually really was what I reached out about was, and I thought it was great, you had, a, you had a one out there a couple months ago that said, if you're not talking about mental health as a leader, you're not talking about the right things. Yeah. And, and a lot of times we get buried into the business of business. So being able to back out and really say, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm going to have an executive team meeting uh, here in, in Omaha in the next couple of weeks. We're going to spend a lot of time talking about how are your people doing? How, how are our team members doing? What, you know, in general, not getting to anybody specific, but in general, what's the, what's the climate environment like? And I think that's, I thought your, your comment about if you're not talking about today, you're not talking about the right things was spot on because this is something personal, office, wherever people are dealing with it. Yeah. Wow. And, and again, that's awareness, right? Even putting out that message is that same thing. I hope that more people with influence wherever you are, right? Everybody can be a leader no matter where you sit, but being able to open up that dialogue and, and just, I, I think it's amazing. It doesn't have to define you, whatever this thing is, but it definitely can help labeling it and moving through it no matter if you're a veteran a spouse a human right there there's an outlet there I, you know i read a great i read a great story today and it was just it was just kind of read it and i caught it in passing but um it was about this this person who was on a um, in a factory and they were working on a line they noticed their their manager wasn't quite you know was acting kind of not the way they normally act, right? They're like a supervisor on the line, just seemed very sh sharp. Actually wound up that they went and talked to that person and found out that they were going through some mental illness. I don't want to say mental illness. They were going through some depression. They were going through some um, things that were affecting their psyche yeah. and actually intervened up. Um, so we talk about leaders down, but you know, this is a great opportunity for people to lead up too. Uh, and, and, you know, th this is a, an opportunity that, again, that's why I say this is a full circle conversation, uh, not just veterans, not just any sure. gender or anybody else. This is a full circle. If, you know, if somebody um, that's out there sees someone they interact with on a daily basis, whether it be their boss, someone else, lead up, you know, just wow. pull them aside. And I, and, I bet, and I bet they'll appreciate it. John, I think that is a huge um, suggestion, tip, trick, whatever you want to call it, because almost view it like if you live in a cul-de-sac, how you would treat each one of your neighbors. Whereas in business, we're very vertical, right? Lack of a better term, we are. We, we've been that way. So a lot of people here will look down and down and down, not looking down on somebody, but let's go, let's go horizontal. Let me look this way, you know, versus up, so to speak. Um, but a question for you, and I don't want to put you on the spot with this one, but, you know, we, we talked about what we can do as leaders, not just leaders of our people, but leaders as a person. And again, looking at anybody that we're interacting with, you know, and, and not to be shy, not to, not to, you know, to, as we're reading this book, you know, let's take off our armor, let's expose ourselves and say, you know, how can we help? And, you know, and don't be afraid to go up to a vice president or a CEO or somebody on the factory or some uh, driver or anybody would it be, but I, I don't want to put you on the spot and I have a couple ideas, but what, what do we look for? I, I think it's easy when we see somebody sullen and depressed, but sometimes, you know, some the people that know me very well, they're like, you're acting awfully happy today, almost too happy. What are you <laughs> hiding? What are you covering up? What are you on? No. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. coffee. You know, any ideas with that? Anything you know that you any tips or tricks? You know, I, I wish there was a, a, a set thing that I could say. I mean, I, I've 
some of the times that, that I've noticed just because I've known some people, you know, I've seen a change in behavior. Um, yeah. Someone getting really quiet. Okay. Really, really uh, someone who's normally extroverted. Yep. Becoming an introvert. Or in your case, as you were saying, someone who's normally an introvert becoming very extrovert all of a sudden. Yeah. That sudden swing for me is sometimes how I, I'll say, hey, you know, is, is everything okay or, or something like yeah, that. They miss a deadline. You know, there's somebody who's always on there, time, always, on yeah, point, all of a sudden early. Performance, yeah. Boom. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 you know, some people say, oh, well, you know, that person's performance is declined. Well, maybe not. Is everything okay? I mean, it's really becoming as a leader – when you have uh, performance that starts declining where maybe five, 10 years ago would have been, okay, well, maybe we need to find someone new. First question I ask a lot of times is, is everything okay? Yeah. Why, why the change? You know, is everything okay at home? Do we know, is, is everything okay in work? Is there, have we is there checked in on them? Yeah. 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 I, mean, I mean, and, and so that's, that's a couple of those items that you can look for, but, but Jim, to answer your question, um, I, I go a lot by gut feel. Sure. And yeah. I mean, it, it, I probably sometimes in leadership, that's a, that's a good thing, but sometimes it's a, it's a, you know, I mean, I, well, most times it's a good thing. I think, <laughs> I think it's a great uh, thing. But you yeah. can't wait for it, but a lot of times it's just a gut feel like, wow, something doesn't seem right with he or she. Sure. And it, you know, it's it just that it's a gut feel. I think everyone has to have, I wish there was a better, more scientific way of doing it or behavioral, index but um sometimes we always want to engineer all this stuff right i mean that's that that's been something eye-opening for me is that we're really smart people okay as in a society there's a lot of great talented people and you can engineer the majority of things but what we're learning more and more is you can't engineer this part and you've got to there's nothing like like what you said john being present Mm -hmm. Um, because it's genuine, it's, there's not an ulterior motive. I'm not sitting there going, okay, what are you going to do with this data when you get it? And they're just setting me up to be fired. When you can shift that culture a bit where people do feel safe to have that conversation, knowing it's not something that is again, going to define me. Uh, we look at this call and all of us have dealt with some kind of mental health issue over the past two years or, or longer, right? Yeah. That does, we're, there's a CEO, a VP, a C, you know what I mean? There's, that isn't saying that we're not functioning and not doing mm-hmm. the best that we can, but it does bring light to the fact that there, everybody is battling something. Yeah. And, and I think the other thing kind of going back, Jim, to a little bit of what you said too, is um, the first thing is be prepared for rejection. Sure. Asking. Because you go up to somebody and ask them, say, is everything okay? Are, are you doing okay? Nine times, I would say 99 times out of 100, their response is going to be, yeah, fine. No problem. I'm fine. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. But the fact okay. that you've asked, yeah. don't be surprised if three hours later, a day later, maybe a week later, that yeah. same person comes in and goes, you know, I really appreciate your asking me. And I'm kind of ready to talk to somebody about something. You got a few minutes. Mm-hmm. Yep. Don't, then- don't. Don't play off that and don't feel like that's open. Sometimes just opening that door again is the best thing that can happen. Yeah, and, and I'm a product of that because when I was drinking 10 years, three months and X amount of days ago, you know, when I was drinking, it, people asked me, I'd be, I have the walls up. No, I'm fine. No, you know, no, I just had one drink. I'm fine, you know, because you're ashamed of it and you're hiding it. And that is just masking something else that you're dealing with. It's just a mechanism. And again, we talked earlier about good mechanisms to cope, i.e. going out for a walk and looking at the beautiful sky or whatever. And then there's others that are not good. And it gets back to uh, something that really struck a chord. I don't know what you said, John, but in our industry, safety is number one. Mm -hmm. And the, the phrase uh, you know, see something, say something, right? I, I was going to say that too, that somewhere yeah. Steve Allen and his PMS, PSMS world is clapping, saying that sounds like big red button to me. You know, yeah, I, I if, mean, if you don't have a safety culture that is, is, you know, personified by somebody hitting the pause button going, I'm not my best or I don't, you know, yeah, I, yeah. I think somebody needs a hug. You know, whatever it might be, I think Steve's heart grew two times today. 
Yeah, and that's great. As you see, we were listening, we're both thinking about that. He's going to be so proud true. of us. Because we, we think about see something, say something as a, like with, in regards to that mm. backhoe being used. Yeah. Or, or or that spoil pile is to, yeah, I mean. You know, yeah. not, not the assets that are our most critical, the most important assets we have in our companies, the people, right? Yeah, yep, yeah. Uh, I, Jimmy, I think we, we only have one more thing to do with John, and I'm excited for this. I am too, John. At this point, we've gone, we, we've, we've just barely, as they say, peeled back the onion. We could talk for days. And I think we're going to have you on again down the road because I think this conversation, we impact one person, then we've done our job today, period. But, you know, at this point of the show, we always like to give you the stage you know, you have the whole audience's attention. If you want to say a word, a phrase, something you want to leave the audience with the, today. The award-winning audience. Oh, wait, I'm audience. sorry. I was going to say, I, I was surprised it wasn't in one of your guys' backgrounds. I'm not sure. Congratulations uh, again, oh, by the way. Oh, <laughs> did, did, did somebody say that we won an award at the SGA? For I Curtis think John Sumner. just did. Yeah. I, think, I think I did, yeah. Yeah. No, hey, hey Jim, thanks. Yeah, and, and really, you know, it's, it's a phrase that I've used and it's very powerful and I'll say it and then I'll explain it, okay. but it's, it's it, make your next 24 the best. And what that means to me is you got, everybody's got 24 hours that's coming up, you know, yep. God, Lord, Lord willing, willing, right? Lord willing. The difference between all of us is what we're going to do with that 24 hours. So I always live in a, in a world where I say, I'm going to make my next 24 the best 24 I've ever had. Yeah. So if everybody can keep doing that, love it. Whether whether it deals with with the issue we talked about today, where it deals about a relationship, whether it deals about business or something that, that you need to mend or something else, make the next twenty four the best. Yeah. Love it. Pick with up that, the phone, I, write that email. Yeah. Yep. That's that's almost a mic drop. Almost a mic. <laughs> Don't drop yeah. your laptop. <laughs> John, we thank you. Yeah, you're a good yeah, friend. You're absolutely. a good friend of the industry. You're an industry leader. Thank you for taking your time today to talk about this very important subject. Um, I, I think we, I speak for all the three of us here. We just hope that one person got one thing out of it to, to change their life in some way for the positive. And again, look for that friend, you know, see something, say something. Don't be afraid to, you know, quietly say to somebody, hey, you doing okay? You're right. I'm always here. If you want to talk, I'm, I'm and, here. And Jim, I don't want to put words in anybody's mouth here, so I'll let everybody do their own. But yeah, um, yeah. I'm happy to be one of those people if you want to reach out. Uh, we'll also make it a point uh, when we post this to share multiple sources as well for anybody who may find themselves, you know, needing to talk to somebody. Um, you know, uh, we'll, we'll make that available too. Absolutely. Fantastic. And guys, it's been great. It's been great to get to know you personally, see you in person and everything else. But it's always a pleasure to come out here and talk because the things that that you're bringing to this to, to this environment right now are so timely. And they're just things that sometimes we aren't really good about stopping in a day and, and really thinking about. But yeah. this is this is one that, that you guys hit spot on. So congratulations again on the award. Put, put that out there again. But uh, till next time, can't wait. I, okay. I think you just want to wrap just it up. Close it down. All right. I'm, I'm going to go off that. Until next time, everybody. Until next week on Coffee Jim, Jim and James, please connect with us. I, I, I'll speak for James and I, and I'm sure John, if you want to connect, if you want to ask a question, uh, people know that I'm very open about that such stuff. So please do. And I'm going to end my safety note, or I'm going to uh, alter it this time. See something, say something, and think about that in a uh, personal aspect, you know, with another person. Until next week on Coffee Jim and James, everybody, please have a great week. Thank you, John, for joining us. Everybody, everybody, please stay safe. We'll talk to you next week. Thanks. Bye, everybody. Thanks, Bye, John. Everybody. Thanks, John. It was awesome.